So I'm a little bit late to this, but uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a, an overview of the current balance changes coming to CNC Rivals as well as my opinion. Uh, I'm going to start with the GDI Drone Swarm. So let's have a look at GDI Drone Swarm to begin with. You can see it has a solid DPS increase uh, from 42 to 30. It's about an almost 50% DPS increase. Uh, the squad size has gone up from 5 to 4, so they're more resilient now. The DPS is more resilient to attacks. The health has been decreased, however, and the vision has been increased. So this might change um, some of the matchups versus missile and laser squads. Um, the worst, the thing to note, though, is that going from uh, 5 to 5 means that you protect some of the DPS uh, if you lose an infantry or lose a, a member of the squad. So I like this a lot. Um, I think this change is going to make drone swarms very good at dealing with infantry, and this should make them pretty solid at dealing with things like flame troopers and shockwave troopers more readily too. Um, remember, they do cost 20, so they're supposed to be like an anti-infantry air unit, with the only answer from infantry really being the uh, lasers and the missile squads. But However, with the prevalence of pit bulls, these things are going to suck, obviously, uh, but we, from going from 5 to 4, it does mean that it's much more difficult for pit bulls to kill them. It will take an extra 2 seconds for pit bulls to kill uh, drones because they've gone from 4 to 5, and every single missile from a pit bull can only kill one member of the drone squad. So they're a bit more resilient to pit bulls as well in terms of holding pads. This will allow the disruptor to deal. So I think drones, by the way, I think drones are probably going to be pretty decent in air decks uh, if you're running an air deck for GDI. Disruptor. This will allow the disruptor to deal damage to infantry of all strengths. I'm assuming this is to deal with things like confessors and to deal with things like uh, zone troopers a bit more effectively because there aren't really any many other beefy infantry. Also means that they can probably deal with grenadiers quite nicely. The uh, the two range though. Disruptors are really like a niche unit. This is the thing like um they saw a little bit of play during some of the champions events where the level cap was nine because people were building like especially on the tech the tech based maps people were building like a lot of zone trooper based decks and so infant the zone the disruptors came out rather to deal with the the zone troopers more than anything else jackson nerf absolutely needed and i think um, 10 to 8 seconds is a 20% uh, duration nerf. It's pretty significant when you think about it, a 20% duration nerf. So, yeah, I think uh, it was definitely definitely too strong. Um, the the buff in general, it's about the way you an 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 analyze this is whether you got the work done in 8 seconds from 10 seconds. Um, a lot of matchups, you probably got the work done within eight seconds so it's going to not change too many sort of interactions that you would have had previously however the, the sort of the situations where you had things like um harvester rushes uh, or trying to get across the map so you'd like long range boosting for instance a predator tank yeah maybe this will have a significant impact on the, the ability to aggress harvesters from across the map with a predator tank for instance mg squad well the mg squad's issue was the speed um they're still very fast they're still the average speed but they Damage to infantry and vehicles has been reduced to 26. Uh, I think I think MG squads were in an okay place. I'm guessing this is because one of the major nerfs in this update is going to be to cyber wheels, and MG squads generally tended to struggle with cyber wheels, so they had to kind of reduce the power of MG squads too to not make them too oppressive. Um, again, I think you, you'll still see MG squads, because you once you get them set up, they're quite difficult to oust unless you've got a direct counter. So the, the speed in general and the ability to get them set up quickly is what was making MG squads good. MLRS, cost is decreased from 70 to 80. Now, MLRS had a double nerf recently, so a decrease of cost of 10. This does mean you can get something like a war dog blocker out, for instance, in that same cost. So you can get an MLRS and a war dog blocker out for the same cost of Tiberium, which could be impactful in terms of setting the MLRS up and be making the same cost of tanks when it's a direct tank counter. Uh, or at least a good way of dealing with cat tanks as long as you've got the blocks on is is a cool thing so yeah maybe we'll see a bit more mlrs play um definitely means it's a bit uh, less punishing to pick it up especially if you're running it instead of tanks mohawk damage to harvesters reduced by about 100 so that's a pretty significant harvester uh, reduction and health increased from 1650 from 1500 um i don't know if this changes uh, too many of the matchups i think it just means they might take one extra shot from a pit bull to kill um, I think they'll still lose 2v1 to pit bulls, and this does mean you can no longer uh, sort of hardcore boost your uh, Mohawk and take the Harvester down really quickly, which is a lot of people did with Mohawks. However, Mohawks were already in a great place as an anti-vehicle unit, so we might see uh, Mohawks a bit more prevalent, because I think, in general, they're going to be a bit more powerful here, especially if we're seeing a constant tank meta still, and the fact they're going to trade better versus pit bulls one-on-one -on -one especially um, means that these things are going to be a bit more durable and their direct vehicle counter uh, is not going to be as easy to to sort of uh, take those matchups with 
the pit bull health going down this doesn't change the the pit bull's um time to kill from the mohawk but in general this is going to sort of lower the beefiness of the pit bull overall it's a 95 health nerf and this i think is going to make a small difference versus missile laser squads and grenadiers but realistically i don't think that's going to change the matchups with things like uh scorpion tanks and pred uh pit bulls so no scorpion tanks and predators maybe it changes the bike matchup that's what i'd be interested to find out whether this uh health change changes the predator the pitbull versus bike matchup which i think is going to be the biggest change um of this particular set of uh, health nerfs if that changes the bike matchup it might make bikes a bit more viable again because bikes were struggling with pitbulls um but i don't think this will change the inclusion of pitbulls in decks i still think pitbulls are raider they're anti-air you can stack them really easily they're good speed pitbulls in general are just really good Predator tank. This is train. Okay, I'm not going to talk about training issues because when it says training issue, all it means is that there was a some sort of discrepancy with training levels versus another matchup that makes it obnoxious. This is what happened with the Banshee um, attack bike matchup. Um, the Banshee had its attack uh, its damage lowered ever so slightly because if you got a level plus three training levels on your opponent's um, bikes you were one-shotting every bike with every shot. So this is just fixing, I guess, some obnoxious level of training issues with a certain matchup. Rhino. This is an interesting one. Um, Rhino attack speed cooldown has gone down, um, so it's going to attack more frequently. Now, if this significantly changes the matchup versus missile squads, for instance, this might make Rhino more viable. Someone like Alicia Destiny is going to love this because she has a really high level Rhino, um, and this might make it oppressive versus certain infantry. However, you're still competing with that slot with things like War Dogs and, and Cyber Wheels if you're the buggy side of things. So you, you, you've got to eliminate or you've got to weigh up, okay, I build a Rhino, but in a War Factory meta where I'm just going to get spammed with tanks eventually, would I rather have a Rhino or would I rather have War Dogs or uh, Cyber Wheels, which are going to tank four shots anyway because they're a squad. And that's, that's the, the thought process going into this for me. Great, it might make it more viable versus infantry. However, if we're in, still in this tank meta where people were just playing tanks, pit bulls, predators, etc., do I want a Rhino or do I want a set of War Dogs that are cheaper and can block and can absorb damage as well? You know, training issue, not going to talk about it. Artillery. Setup reduced time of 20 sec uh, 20%. Turn speed uh, is going to uh, turn more quickly and the HP has gone up. Problem with the artillery is it's from the Nod Tech Lab, essentially. And it's a shit unit from the Nod Tech, Nod Tech, Nod Tech Black. So I... <laughs> That, that's the problem with artillery and it's a single it's a single target it's not like the juggernaut where it's got splash damage so when you set the juggernaut up you know you've got a complete set of area control when you set the artillery up you're hitting one target over and over again um so yeah i'm not convinced personally not convinced this I, i'm not convinced artillery will ever be good unfortunately avatar it was too easy to kill harvesters while contesting the missile platform against ground units this should tune that down as well as allowing infantry a little bit more time to fight back what infantry are going to have time to fight back? This is the testing. This is the testing. The only infantry that I can think will fight back versus an avatar are zone troopers, where you can send two sets of zone troopers versus an avatar. It's going to mince every other form of infantry. Every other form of infantry. Maybe the grenadier gets a bit, a bit more out, a little bit more out of this because the grenadier did do a decent amount of damage on defense against the avatar. Um, so maybe the grenadier gets more out of this, but every other infantry is just going to get minced. Like there's no fighting back with infantry versus the avatar. Uh, damage to harvesters down and damage to structures down but the explosion damage is up so the point control of the avatars is going to be better because they've got the explosion damage going up i want to talk about this though the damage to harvesters reduced by almost 33 percent now this is gonna um like a lot of people will look at this and say yeah well okay great but if you're getting an avatar to your uh, your harvesters and you're not losing the game you're probably going to get the harvester kill regardless avatars are really beefy and really quick so if you're at the enemy's harvesters a damage reduction, I don't think, is going to make that much difference, personally. I still think you're going to get the, the Harvester kill, and you're going to get another Avatar out. I, I don't actually think this is going to make too much difference, because the problem with the Avatars is they're beefy and they're speedy, and so they can just run across the map and hit the and hit the Harvesters instantly. And e unless you're running Orcas or Orca Bombers or, or, or some kind of Tech Lab counter, even if you're spamming Predator tanks at this thing, it's not going to die before you can kill their Harvester. And even then, you've got the explosion damage to worry about if you're running a Predator and you're up close and personal. And even then, the damage to vehicles is still the same. So it can just turn off, kill the vehicle back onto the Harvester. So I actually don't think this is going to make too much of a difference. Again, buggy, same reasoning with the um, the, the Rhino. I'm not going to talk about it too much more here, but uh, unless, uh, 
it still just gets crushed by by vehicles and vehicles are kind of where we're at right now in terms of the meta cyber wheel nerf um, attack speed decreased I, again uh cyber wheels are pretty in annoying to deal with and what's going to be interesting here is how much of an impact this has on the concave matchup with missile and laser squads because you're reducing their attack speed by a pretty significant amount by about 15 percent overall yeah you, you, sort of a decent amount of, of change here so whether this changes that matchup they also are not going to shred through um shockwaves and flames as easily either Giga Cannon, de health decrease, but stage 1 and stage 2 damage increase. Um, a little more upfront damage. Well, with Oxana, people ran it with Oxana, right? So people only ever ran the Giga Cannon with Oxana. So you blitzed through these two stages anyway. You got through them so quickly. Um, like, running the Giga Cannon without Oxana seems kind of bad. So running the Giga Cannon, this is, I don't actually know how much of an impact this is going to have. It's good, obviously. The Giga, the Giga Cannon was already good. And with Oxana, the stage damage increase might be a bit bit more significant, but um, uh, but overall, it's not. I don't think I don't know. I don't know if it's huge changes, but it might. But the Giga, the Giga Cannon was already pretty decent, so it's probably just going to be in a better place. Oxana, but nerf good. Needed to happen. And not much more I can say about it. Scorpion tanks training issue. Okay, training issue again. I'm not talking about those. And training issue with stealth tanks. So I'm not going to talk about those. All right. So those are my thoughts on the update notes. Thank you very much for watching, guys.